This discast is about uniform circular motion. Take a moment and read through the question carefully. Right, I'm going to start by sketching what we have in this question. So we have an air hockey puck which is on a table with a hole in the centre and the puck is connected by a cord to a second mass which is suspended below the table. And that has a mass of M2. Our puck has a mass of M1 and it is rotating in a circle on the table and the circle has a radius of R. And the first thing that we're asked to find is the tension in the string. So let's add that on to our diagram. And the first thing to think about is what is actually causing the tension in the string? Well, the tension is being caused by this mass being suspended down here. So let's draw on our mass M2 and just consider that alone for a moment and which forces are acting on that. So we have a force due to the weight of the mass acting down, which is M2G. And acting upwards, we have the tension in the cord. And we're told some additional information in this problem. We're told that the mass is stationary and suspended. So because it's stationary, we know that the forces on the mass must be balanced due to Newton's first law. So that tells us that the tension is going to be equal to the weight. So the tension T will equal M2 times G. The second part of our problem asks us to find the speed of the puck. So we're looking at the tangential speed there. So let's consider for the puck, again, what forces are acting there. So we have the tension acting, and that is providing the centripetal force that is keeping the puck moving in a circle. So the expression for centripetal force is mv squared over r. So the mass of the puck is m1, so we'll substitute that in there. But we know from our previous part of the question that the tension is equal to m2 times g. So then all we have to do is rearrange this to get an expression for v. So that gives us that v is equal to the square root of m2g r over m1. So the third and final part of the question asks us to find the period of the rotation. Now, just to be confusing, the period of the rotation is also given the symbol of a capital T, and the period is the time taken for one complete rotation. So time taken is equal to the distance traveled, which in this case is the circumference of the circle, so that's given by 2 pi r, divided by the speed. And we already have an expression for v, which was square root of m2 over m1 g r. So then all that's left is to simplify that, which leaves us with 2 pi times the square root of m1 r over m2 g.